<laughs> hey, hey, well, it's a race day, and boy, oh boy. This is an eventful one. Mm-hmm. Uh, quick, uh, quick intro. Uh, they cut the course already because of uh, bad weather. Yeah. Severe weather. Severe. I noticed it. Lightning. Anyway, we're headed for the buses. Stick around. There's a lot to see. <laughs> Hello, this is an update regarding the Walt Disney World Half Marathon on Saturday, January 6th. We want you to be aware that our teams are keeping a close eye on local weather conditions. The safety of our guests and cast members is our top priority, and we have made the difficult decision to modify the course due to severe weather. In addition to the half marathon, we'll begin 15 minutes early at 4.45 a.m. Please refer to the Digital Expo and Event Guide and Run Disney social media channels for additional information and answers to common questions. Thank you for your understanding and have a great evening. Hey, we just entered. Uh, we just entered our corral and uh, walking up. Check it out.
Oh. You guys may never see it. I know. Hey, we're almost done. first uh, video of uh, several to come uh, concerning our coast to coast challenge. Coast to coast recap time. Yep. So <clears throat> as you know, we were training for the uh, uh, Run Disney coast to coast challenge, which is a half marathon at Disney World. And then a week later, half marathon at Disneyland. Yep. This video, we're going to talk about our half marathon at Disney World, uh, the race, what happened, and then we're gonna kind of uh, let you know uh, what we did afterwards, mm -hmm. and uh, and then kind of leave you on a cliffhanger because uh, then we'll talk about uh, the following week. So how'd it go? The race itself went went well. You know, we yeah, ran. Yeah. <clears throat> it felt good. It wasn't too hot for the first time ever in yeah. our experience. Yeah, running on marathon cool. weekend. Yeah. Um, we tackled those seven point one miles. Yeah, it was kind of, you know, I do want to mention another thing. I mentioned in the video at the end about elevation training. We ran, I thought, exactly the way we've always run. You know, we're, we're kind of slow and we're just going. But when we looked at our times, we actually ran uh, like faster than normal. And the thing that really hit us was going up the, the hills. Mm -hmm. uh, we ran them and when we got to the top, we kept running and that's not yeah. usually our style. So we felt really, really good, mm -hmm. particularly at the end of the race. 
Yeah. Uh, so that was that was an amazing thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, high elevation training. Uh, wow. This <clears throat> modified course. So there was inclement weather in the forecast. Mm -hmm. They preemptively decided to cut the race in half. Um, which meant we didn't get to run through the castle, right? So the original route was starting at Epcot, running up a bunch of highway, going through Magic Kingdom, running down through a bunch of highway, and then cutting through Epcot to the finish line. Mm -hmm. If you're cutting that in half, you know, you can't exactly just, you know, run to Magic Kingdom and call it there. I guess you could, but that's not what they nice. were doing. <laughs> <laughs> so instead they had us run for about four miles around it felt like we were running in circles. It was like up and up an entrance ramp, down an entrance, like exit ramp. Yeah. It was just like up and down, up and down, up yeah. and down for the first four miles. Yeah. And that felt okay. Yeah. That felt okay. It was okay. Um, and then we got into Epcot and that was fun. So we got to run through Epcot. We came in by uh, living with the land kind of backstage mm -hmm. and then ran down that main part um, leading towards the World Showcase, ran around the World Showcase. And then we popped backstage again at some point. I don't remember exactly where. But right about the end of the World Showcase, right mm. around Mexico, it started to sprinkle. Uh, oh, I thought it was raining <clears> before that. It was raining. I thought it was raining on us going into the World Showcase. Uh, yeah. Well, anyway, it rained on us at the end of the rain, end of the race for us. Yeah. Um, what well, what that meant though was, of course, out on the highway, other than the character stops, there weren't any photo pass people. Oh, yeah. So we didn't get any photos, of course, for the first four miles. Mm -mm. And then once we got into Epcot. We were either separated every time we ran across a photo pass person, or they were loading up or switching out or whatever. They were they were empty yeah. little uh, photo pass huts. So yeah, if you're not familiar with photo pass uh, on the run, uh, the photo pass photographers who do a fantastic job and they're out there for hours, right? They have a little uh, kind of neon green mm -hmm. tent, uh, like a single person little tent, and they sit uh, in those, and, and because of the neon green. You, you can see them coming. <clears throat> and so, you know, kind of prepare yourself because, you know, you're running, you're like, oh, oh photo pass. <laughs> but they were either empty or packing up. Yeah, or the few photos that we did get, we were separated. So yeah. we don't have any photos of us running together. We don't yeah. have any finish line photos either. Anything. I don't know if that's because of the rain or what, but no photo, mm -hmm. uh, finish line photos. <clears throat> oh, well. So, you know, it was, it was okay. It was a little bit of a bummer. To travel that far to run seven miles when we were training for a half marathon. Yeah, I, and and <clears throat> and then we found out afterwards that some people got cut during the run. Uh, they cut them at about six miles. Yeah. Uh, so some people made it through all of that highway <clears throat> and got into Epcot, and then they were like, "Sorry, you can't get this World Showcase, the only fun part left in the yeah. <laughs> run." They couldn't. They couldn't run yeah. around it. So it was. I'm it sure. It was weird. I'm sure that there. Um, so there was some weird weather on mm -hmm. this trip, mm -hmm. right? Um, a few days later, we were hiding out in Cava del Tequila. Um, <laughs> what better place, right? Uh, I mean... I mean, it's a cave and it's got booze. We're so fine. We're, we're inside. We're taking cover during a tornado <clears throat> warning, which yeah. if you're not familiar with tornado... Did I say warning? Uh -huh. Watch. If you're not familiar with tornado watches and warnings, watch is like, oh, the conditions are right for a tornado to form. Warning is there's been some formation in the area. And one did touch down uh, so, somewhere in Florida. So while we're hanging out yeah. in Cava, it switches from a watch to a warning. So weird weather. So yeah. I'm sure there was some reason for them to <clears throat> yeah. cut Safety. it. Safety, right? We didn't see any lightning. We no. didn't see any thunder. It just I thought it was interesting it. that they um, that they did cut it a little short because it was, it was just raining. Yeah. It was just raining. Um, another interesting thing, so they started the race 15 minutes early again to like get us done by the time this rain was supposed to start we still stood in the corrals for 45 minutes yeah so i it <clears> just <throat> felt weird that like oh my gosh we need to get this show on the road and then we're gonna wait five minutes between every wave <laughs> um that gets pushed out yeah, and so, if you watch the footage you know our time in the corral and our time for the first you know five miles or whatever it was it's just it was great running weather. <clears throat> it was. But, it felt good. You know, it was humid, but it was fine. Um, another interesting thing that I noticed on this race. So we typically have to pee a lot when we run, <laughs> yeah. um, because I think we're just trying, especially in really warm or humid um, environments, we're trying to just kind of stay hydrated. Well, because of all of the nonsense that we're about to tell you about, we had a pretty ridiculous two days leading up to the race. We did not adequately or we we didn't hydrate like we normally would um 
Right. So <clears throat> actually, uh, we uh, we did something uh, we never do before a half marathon. Are you just going to jump ahead to that? Well, no, I'm just going to mention. Okay. Uh, you know, we had some we cocktails. had some cocktails the, the night day, before. The night before. And again, it anyway, all makes sense so, when we get through this next portion. So back to it. But we didn't. All we did was drink a Propel before yeah. we went to sleep, and uh -huh. that was it. Um, in the morning, I think we probably drank another Propel, but I mean, like we didn't do we didn't do our usual like uh -huh. let's make sure our bodies have enough moisture, mm -hmm. and it turned out to be the perfect amount of hydration to make it through um, make it through seven miles. Um, flash forward a week, again, we'll talk about this in a future video, but when we did the Disneyland race. We did pay attention to our hydration, and we had to pee 15,000 times Too before much. we left the parks. So yeah. I think maybe we need to we've been overdoing our, our hydration yeah. leading up to Because yeah. those bathroom breaks, like, chip away at our time. Big oh, time. Yeah, before I forget, too, the hotel we stayed at, uh, <clears throat> oh, uh, that's later. You, you'll, get, you'll get that one next hang time. On, hang, yeah, on. hang on, hang anyway, on. Anyway, so the race was great. You know, uh, one big bonus. Uh, we got to see our friends. We got to see so many friends. <clears throat> oh my gosh, it was awesome. It was wonderful. We saw them at the start, and then of course we're too slow, so we didn't see them uh, uh, oh, again. But it was really, really awesome to spend time with our friends. So mm -hmm. uh, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, after the race, though, we went to Epcot. Mm -hmm. We got some drinks. We got some food. Mm -hmm. um, just yeah. kind of spent some time there. That's um, what you do. We made a reservation our big post half marathon reservation for uh shoot what's it called rodeo uh round andy's up. backyard rodeo <clears throat> roundup something yeah. other than new, new kind restaurant. of sit down restaurant in hollywood studios it was so much fun and the food was fantastic so we're vegetarian we got the vegetarian meal it was so good now it would have been better if we had run 13 miles that day <laughs> it was a lot of food. <laughs> it was. It was a lot of food, but don't, it was delicious. Don't and listen was, to the reviews. It was way fun. We've seen the reviews about it that are pretty negative. You know what, though? They're mostly <clears throat> negative about the meat. So yeah. go and get the vegetarian. Get the vegetarian off. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the food really was delicious, and it's all you care to enjoy. Yeah, and it's a boatload. And that they, includes they the desserts. So much. Yeah. <clears throat> so many sides. But the environment, it is so cool. Yeah. And and they refer to you as toys because mm -hmm. you're you know you're a toy and and <clears throat> you know uh there's just stuff going on that's not intrusive. Um mm -hmm. uh, let me just say characters are there but they're not really there. It's so cool. It is it is just so, so much fun. And then when we left they're oh like well gosh. when we left so I think we were using the bathrooms because, you know, you got to use the bathrooms uh, in a restaurant because there's views. way fewer people in there all the time. So, you know, I'm waiting for David. I'm, you know, checking my phone, whatever. And then David comes out. You know, I still have my phone. I, I guess it looked like we were about to take a picture or something. Oh. So one of the, the hosts comes over and asks if, you know, we'd like a picture taken. I'm like, sure. sure. Yeah, that'd be great. And her follow-up question was, do you want to grab a horsey? What do you say other than yes? Yeah. Absolutely. So we grabbed horses and we took <laughs> a lot of ridiculous pictures. It was so much fun. It was a great place. Yeah. So if you ever get the chance, go to Andy's uh, backyard uh, barbecue. If we got the order of those words wrong, we'll put it in there. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Really, really awesome. Yeah. Uh, oh, and another thing um, <clears throat> not only did we get our 13.1 our, uh, uh, mile uh, medal the end of the race. Mm -hmm. uh, but I got something extra too. Can you hear it? <laughs> it took a few days to set in. That wasn't really just the marathon. Um, half marathon. Oh, First half half. Marathon. I got that from Florida. Thank you, Florida. Gifts that keep on giving. Mm, boy. Okay. So that was the race. Yeah. It was, okay. it was okay. It was short. It was a little weird. It was weird. But we did it. Here's part of why it was weird. The two days leading up to this race. Oh my gosh. So our plan was to leave on Thursday um, afternoon arrive around midnight, um, stay off site that night, kind of leisurely wake up, maybe see if we can get a Tron uh, virtual queue, oh, yeah, right, right. You know, take our time, yeah. sleep in, go to the expo, have a great time. Well, here's the deal. But our annual pass had two days left on it. Our annual pass expired Friday and Saturday. on Saturday. Yeah. So it's like, let's use it. Perfect. Uh, we had reservations at Mama Melrose to do some carbo mm -hmm. loading the night or the afternoon before. And... It, it was all, it was a lovely plan, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We were planning on leaving here, so we live in the middle of nowhere now. We don't have a major airport anywhere near us. No. 
So we opted to fly out of Albuquerque, which is a three hour drive away. So we're gonna leave like noon to get there, four or five o'clock flight, maybe 11 if we wanted to really yeah. give ourselves some padding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what happened. A snowstorm blew in. <laughs> the day that we were supposed to hit the road and it's bad in the morning. It's like really bad. And we started doing like mental math on how long it could possibly take us to get there. We ended up leaving the house at 8.30 in the morning for a 5 p.m. flight to arrive in Florida at midnight. Okay, so we're looking at a real long travel day already. So we get in the car, we leave, we're taking it like 20 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. Couldn't see the roads. It was a heavy snow. And it was and, just starting. And again, I just moved here. This is our first winter. So we're doing okay, and our car is doing a great <laughs> job. You're doing great driving, but like, like, we've never tried to drive that far in that bad of snow through a mountain pass to get to our first next town. Like, it was um, stressful. Yeah. <laughs> Man, At one point, we're driving down, kind of going downhill. This is after we've made it through Taos, so we're like somewhere between Taos and Santa Fe. So we're going down, and there's this big like tanker truck thing oh my behind gosh. us. And thank God I didn't see it. But David, after a while, was like, "Oh my God!" <laughs> In my rear view, I see this big tanker truck trying to stop behind us, and it starts a fishtail, right? Okay. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, okay. we're not going to make it." So okay, he gets control. He backs off of us, <laughs> okay? And so, you know, we drive for a little while, the roads kind of clear up a little bit, and he gets to a point, at this point, I think it was just a two lane uh -huh. highway. So he gets to a point where he can pass us. We go, we go out to four lanes, he can pass us. Dude drives by us. Do you want to know what was in his tanker? It was a septic pumping <laughs> truck. You must be joking. We almost, we almost got rear-ended by a septic <laughs> pumping truck. Boy, that would have been a smelly situation. What? <laughs> okay, so... But he didn't. He didn't. We're we fine. we finally... We're fine. And it snowed all um, the way... We hit Albuquerque. a certain point where we could drive the speed limit-ish. The roads were clear enough, but it, it pretty much snowed the whole way. It took us five hours to get there. Uh, we did. This was one good thing that happened. And because we left so early, we got to do this. Mm. Um, we happened to have some uh, good friends who were just... Oh. Happened to be visiting Santa Fe. So yeah. we stopped. It got us out of the car for a little bit. Yeah. We got to have lunch with them, visit, eat a really good meal. I mean, we both get out of the car like this. <laughs> it's like, oh, so we got to do this a little bit. We ate a meal. Yeah. So that was really nice. I was still thinking we weren't going to make it. So the whole the time. snow just kept coming down. And the whole time, I'm checking our flight. It's on time. And I'm like, if we can get there, we're going to yeah. gonna be on a flight tonight. This okay. is okay. So we get to Albuquerque. Uh, we, great parking. We roll into the parking lot or into the parking section and it says like all three lots are full. And I'm like, what? everything's full. That can't be right. So we don't have any choice at that point but to keep going. Mm. And then we get there and it is most certainly not full. I don't know what was up with those signs. That was weird. So we got a good parking space and we go into the airport. We're still on time. So, Flight still says on time. Yeah. We check in our bags. This is probably, so it was five o'clock. I think it was like 2.30 when we rolled in. So about two and a half hours before the flight, a little earlier. So than we had two check-in bags, and then we both carry. Uh, we carried all uh, of our carry running gear. Bags. Yeah, that's where all our running gear goes, right? Right. Okay. So, so we, this comes into play here in a minute. Yeah, we check. <laughs> we check in our bags. We check our bags. <clears throat> uh, we get through security. It was actually like easy really breezy. Uh, nobody was there. I guess uh, everybody knew there was a snowstorm happening, <laughs> and that flights weren't going to get out. <laughs> all right. So we get through. We go have our customary pre-flight beer. beer. And we're about this far into our beer when I get a message saying, hey, your flight's been delayed. And now again, okay. Albuquerque is a major airport, but it's not the most major airport. Mm. We could not get a direct flight to Florida. So <clears throat> we, our plan was to fly from Albuquerque to Houston right. to Florida. Okay. So our flight's delayed. I'm like, we can maybe make our connection. Yeah. It's only like half an hour late. It'll be tight, but yeah. maybe we can make it. Maybe they'll hold the plane for us, you yeah. know, whatever. And then a few minutes later, your flight's an hour and a half delayed. And I'm like, okay, we're not okay. Gonna we're not going to make it out of Houston. Or oh, well. We're not going to make that we'll flight. Figure we'll figure out. something out. Okay. A few more minutes, your flight's canceled. Wah, wah. So, we got on the phone. I canceled our hotel that we had lined up in Orlando. I booked a new hotel in Albuquerque. You canceled, you canceled our uh, dining reservation for Mama Melrose. Uh -huh. uh, I moved our <clears throat> rental car pickup. Mm-hmm. And then we went to the hotel. 
And we went to the hotel. And then on the way to the hotel, what about our bags? We checked in our bags. Um, so, <laughs> luckily, because we had all of our running gear in our bags, we had a spare pair of underwear <laughs> each. <laughs> One spare. So I had all of our running clothes and just for grins, because we're running two races, even though we're planning on doing laundry, we brought an extra, extra pair of socks actually and an extra pair of underwear uh, each. Um, word to the wise. Pack your toothbrush in your carry-on. So we get to the hotel, we're like, hey, this happened. Do you have any toothbrushes in this? <coughs> they said, we have toothpaste. So $20 later. <laughs> the next morning. We bought very expensive toothbrushes at the airport. Okay, so anyway, we ended up rebooking our flight yep. for um, basically the same thing. So Albuquerque to Houston to Orlando, leaving at 6 a.m. the next morning, okay? Right. So we, um, the next morning, first of all, we took very cool showers in Albuquerque. Oh yeah, that was weird. At the Hilton Garden Inn. Yeah. Um, very cool showers, but at least we got to put on clean underwear. We put on all of our other same clothes. Yeah, right. So we're like... We get up at two. We're going on uh, two and, or three. And it's the entire city is iced over. <clears throat> we got iced over. Right. Thankfully, we were only about a quarter of a mile from the airport. Yeah, we uh, were right there. It was so terrible. it's like, ooh boy, it was, it was tricky. But we got there, we got almost the same parking spot. We did. It's like, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> we get to the airport and our first question, where is Where do we get our, our bags? So they told us, okay, well, it's gone. Like, it's gone, that's fine. It <clears throat> will be at your final destination. Um, and we're like, okay, that's fine. So then we bought our toothbrushes and took our free toothpaste and went to brush our teeth in the All right. restroom. Um, we got some breakfast, <clears throat> we got on the plane. Plane's on time. So it's not snowing anymore, it's clear skies, looking good, but we're told it's gonna take us a few minutes before we can take off. We have to de-ice the plane. <laughs> yeah. And we have to um, readjust the fuel because so many flights got canceled they were loading up our plane with a lot of extra luggage that needed to make it somewhere else, right? So like ours, our luggage got there through Dallas. Other people's luggage was now on our plane, which meant the, the weight yeah. the, the weight was very different than what they planned for. And we had to refuel. Long story short. An hour and five minutes later, we finally take off. <laughs> So, we've missed our connection in and Houston. Houston. Um, <laughs> and before we even land, I, I, get a, I happen to be a, a connect to the Wi-Fi on, on this flight. Uh, before we even land, I see that we've been booked on a flight to Birmingham. Alabama. And then another flight <laughs> to, um, to Orlando. So again, now we're looking at arriving in, in Orlando like a full day later than we planned. And then we realize we have to pick up our race bibs. Yeah. Well, we knew that. But before, we were going to arrive at like 1.30 in the afternoon. Still plenty of time. New flights, multiple legs. We're now cruising in around 5.40. Which is, you know, 5 o'clock traffic time. Uh, so. And the expo where you pick up your bib. Closes at 7. Closes at 7. Going to be tight. So. We land in Orlando. Luckily, our other two legs were on time. The yeah. one out of Birmingham was like, or no, Houston. One of them was, I think the one out of Houston, was like looking like it was gonna be a little late. Like oh, we were yeah. waiting on a pilot to show up yeah, or something. Okay. And so it like, we were a little <laughs> nervous about that one, but we made it, made it to Birmingham, made it to Florida. Great, 540, wonderful, we're off the plane. And we have to go to the uh, baggage claim office to pick up our bags right. because they didn't arrive right with right. the plane. So we go to grab our bags. And no we're like, problem. oh, there they are. Perfect. Perfect. So we do, do, do. Here's our little baggage claim. Also, by the way, I kept our baggage claim tags. I like. Who does that? I never hold on to those. Thankfully. They came in handy this yeah, time because thankfully. they actually had to scan them. Yeah. Um, and then we look at our suitcase and we're like, what happened here? They ran over our suitcase. It had to have been run over. Completely destroyed <laughs> our suitcase. Uh, so 
you know, now our time, you know, the plan is, okay, let's pick up our we luggage. Go let's go to the rental car. Well, now, 15 minutes later, because we have we to, have file, to a file a claim and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they, the, the thing's like ruined. Oh my gosh, now we're really cutting it close. So now we have to go okay. get our rental car. So we go get the rental car. <clears throat> we're, I'm, I'm a preferred member, so we're able to just go to the garage. However, they still had to see me, I, whatever. But it didn't take as long as waiting in the line in the airport normally takes. So they're like, here, B30 is your space. Go find your car. It's like the other end of the parking garage. So we're walking for like 15 minutes. Compact SUV. Yeah, right compact, uh, compact SUV, <clears throat> Kia Soul or equivalent was what we requested. Honda, so we Honda get to the parking space and I'm not even paying attention. And David's like, this isn't our car. And I look up and there's a pickup truck there. And I'm thinking, oh, did they give us a truck again? Because one time in Florida, they gave us a pickup truck, which was weird. Hmm. No, no, it was the car next to a pickup truck. It was like a 700 horsepower Dodge Challenger. We got a muscle car. <laughs> I swear, I swear. <laughs> when we started it in the parking garage, all the car alarms around us went off. It, it was unbelievable. It was pretty ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so. Okay, so whatever. <clears throat> we get. Then we punch in we Expo <clears throat> directions. You're gonna get there with. You're gonna get there. The our original ETA was six fifty four, and we're like, this is seven. cutting it very close. It and then traffic <clears throat> kind of snared us up a little bit extra. So by the time we kind of cleared through the traffic, our ETA and what time we actually did show up was six uh, fifty six. So we had four minutes, <laughs> and so we're driving up. I'm like, we're gonna have to. Run. Have to run. We're gonna have to run when we get out of the car. So we parked, and if you're familiar, if you've done these races, or if you're not, the parking lot's way over here. Yeah. And then there's like a building and a building and a building and a building. You got to go to this building way long over here. Long uphill sidewalk. I, I should do the math to see how yeah. long it is. It was. It, it felt like at least like a quarter. We're gonna have mile. to sprint. We're gonna have to really haul. And so we um, <clears throat> got out of the car and started running. We did. And we ran, and it even had a hill. We ran, and yeah. we ran, and we ran. Yeah. And we got there and at 7. The doors are... Doors are closing. They're making announcements over the loudspeakers. The expo is closed. closing. They let us in, thank goodness. And as soon as we stopped running, we realized that we had both pulled a muscle. Because we had been sitting for 36 hours and then sprinted out of nowhere. Guess what muscle I pulled? His groin. Yeah. And what muscle did you pull? I pulled a hip, like a <clears> hip <throat> thing right there. It was pretty uncomfortable. It was nuts, man. Okay, so then we make it into the expo. We get our bibs. Great. They give us a... No, that was the other race. Sorry. Jumping ahead. While Laura's getting her bib, and I already have mine, a good friend of ours, Alan, he calls me. I was like, oh, Alan's calling. I wonder what's going on. So I answer, and he says, looks like you came a long way to run a 10K. And he didn't even know about the, like, 36 hours that it took us to get to that <laughs> point right there. It was like... Like, it was the, the timing of it was <clears throat> unbelievable. So he, he, he wanted to tell, he wanted yeah. us to hear from somebody, uh, you know, friendly. And it's like, what? So at that point, I kind of hit my breaking point. Yeah. Like the whole, the whole trip it had been things that were out of our control. <clears throat> and at a certain point, it's like, I just kind of want to be in control of something. Mm -hmm. Just like one little thing. Can I just, and so I was horribly disappointed, mm -hmm. but I was also a little relieved because I know that travel day was not the day that we needed to have before a half marathon, right? Like we were running around, we were stressed out. We were, it was not a relaxing day, no. but it would have been really nice to actually run the half marathon mm -hmm. that we planned for yeah. and paid for yeah. and worked towards. Mm -hmm. And so I was like kind of on the verge of tears, but also like kind of laughing at how ridiculous this whole like couple of days have been. It's called delirium. Yeah, 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 because we didn't get much sleep the night before. I have a hard time sleeping on planes, although I did a little bit on that one. Anyway, so we go get our t-shirts, and we just go back to the hotel, and it's like, you know what? We would normally, like, at this point, when we do run Disney, because they, you have to wake up at, like, 2 in the morning, yeah. we're normally in bed by 4, 5 p.m. Yeah. Like, we call it early. Yeah. Uh, we, we call our day off early. So by this point, it's, like, 7.30. I think we made it to a hotel maybe, like, close to 8. And so it's like, in for a penny, in for a pound. Like, let's go have a drink. Let's, let's go drink. We're we're not running thirteen miles tomorrow. So and, let's and go remember get a drink. Th that day we woke up at about two, three in the morning. Yeah. And and so I had my stand goal like hours. Oh yeah. Like well, hours except before. that we were sitting on planes all day. <laughs> no, but yeah. 
So that's what we did. We went and had, uh, we had, we had, had dinner. We had some drinks. Yeah, we finally went, went to bed around man. 10, I think. Kind of disappointed, but still, I mean, yeah. we're there. Uh, we're told officially that it's being cut for safety due to the severe weather, but that the race would still be considered an official attempt towards a coast to coast challenge. So, you know, it's like, hey. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So, in the end, we did give ourselves our little check mark on our shirts. Yep. Um, and uh, I have uh, in the works a modification for the front of the shirt to scratch yeah. out the 13 and make it a seven. Yeah, right. Um, but we need to. Yeah, it was, it was all kind of weird, out. you know. And, and after after the race, you know, like we said, we went to Epcot and we, we met with uh, our, our uh, really wonderful friend Alistair. Mm -hmm. um, and he even had a sign that he was uh, hoping to uh, to have. If for it us. had been 13 miles, he would have had time yeah. to go back to the hotel. Or no, did he bring it with him? Yeah. He well, checked it. And also, but, it was pouring yeah. right yeah. time. So anyway, he was uh, going to be at the finish uh, line with the was, sign. It, it was it was all. I mean, we did it. We feel good about, you know, doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, feel bad about the way it all had to be kind of modified and stuff. But, you know, uh, so a lot of good, uh, awesome memories. Uh, just, uh, it was just a weird, was a weird race day. And <clears throat> that whole opening of our trip kind of hung like a cloud mm -hmm. <laughs> over us. We, like, we were, we were waiting for what else was going to go wrong. Because so much went awry at yeah. the beginning of this trip. We were just waiting for what was next. Yeah. So what is next? <laughs> well, well, we I'm, got a couple more videos to tell you yeah, a lot about it. Yeah, we're going to... Uh, so next up, we'll have spectating. So right. we, we got up the next morning and spectated the full marathon. Right. So we'll tell you all about that. There yeah. were some hiccups there. Yes. Um, and then we went to California, and we'll tell you about that race. And then we'll show you our medals. Right. If you see yourself in any of our videos, let us know. Uh, and uh, thanks to all our wonderful friends. We had such a, a great time, even amidst all of this kind of stress and everything that the travel kind of imposed on us. Uh, but let us know uh, if you participated, uh, what you thought, how you did, and uh, just keep in touch with us. Uh, you know, and if, if I think it would be really nice to like, subscribe, and hit notifications because we got some videos coming. <laughs> Uh, but you know, we kept telling each other always <laughs> an adventure with you. This one is a doozy, and we've got way more coming. And so. true story <clears throat> always an adventure with you began as a saying between us on a trip where things went weird. <laughs> yeah, so you know, hey, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> hey, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned, we got plenty more to come.